the analyst from Standard & Poor's who follows California says it's a great way for the state to manage its volatility, and that's a big issue in California. Um, and a few states which has done studies on state volatility, we've written about it in the magazine, they really like the idea too, and Pew especially likes when states try and do something about their volatility, like tie it to savings. So that's exactly what California is trying to do. The folks from the education side, there is an educational funding component to this that won't really kick in immediately at any rate for the first few years if this passes. Um, the educational community likes it less so. There are, some of the groups are actually against it for that reason, that it doesn't really seem to do much for education. But overall, if you're looking at trying to manage states' finances and, uh, and, and manage its savings, then the financial community really likes this. There's sort of a whole background from uh, on education funding in the state. It's complicated. It's weird. And this is basically, they threw in this, this component that part of this money would go towards education. But because of that weirdness, it, it, it doesn't actually kick in for a few years. The big one, which is attracting lots of money, as all California ballot measures do, uh, would raise the cap on non-economic damages from malpractice, things like pain and suffering, from 250000 to a million. The more interesting part about that issue is the fact that it contains a number of other things that are, I guess you could call them sweeteners, um, to get voters to vote for them. I mean proponents have admitted as much. They have basically included a lot of different things in this medical malpractice measure. Opponents would say, well, that's because raising medical malpractice isn't a terribly popular policy change. A lot of people argue it's just a giveaway to trial lawyers. Um, and it's, it simply doesn't have as much political support as something like, say, requiring doctors to consult drug databases when they're prescribing something for the first time, or drug testing doctors, which I didn't realize was something that people wanted, but apparently it is. As a lot of pollsters have noted, when support dips below majority, the majority, and your job is convincing people to enact some very sweeping changes, the advantage is somewhat on the no people who just have to tell you that this is going to increase cost or this is going to do something. All they have to do is plant a bit of doubt and voters are going to be reluctant to enact so many sweeping changes when they have some shell of doubt.